I'm Paula Froelich. Take a journey with me to explore the unknown and discover the unexpected. This is Abroad Abroad. The adventure starts now. Sometimes traveling isn't about where you go, it's about the people you meet along the way. And on my trip to Afghanistan for an international ski challenge, I met a few people who were impossible to forget. Salam, my friend. Take Beatrice, who did a fundraising event at home in Switzerland and decided, why not come to Afghanistan for the real thing? Or Ashley, a Bostonian living in Switzerland who wanted to see the side of Afghanistan that's not in the media. She was psyched to find a thriving community trying to make a go of it. And finally, there's Candace, an Australian photographer who's been crossing the region for the past year and a half dressed in men's clothing because, fun fact, it's not so easy to travel by yourself as a woman in this part of the world. I look at Zara, people are not sure if I'm a boy or a girl. I kind of mix it with both. So if, with the men, I tell them I'm a I'm butcher, I'm a boy. With the girls, I'm like, I'm doctor, I'm a girl. And uh, yeah, it worked out really well. Because Candace can pass as both male or female, people tell her things they would never tell us. Like how they date. And I make friends with these girls and they're lovely. So we just talk about what kind of boys they like. It's really quite cute. Does it matter? Because I met someone in the village the other day who didn't meet her husband until the day they got married. Yeah, so basically there are stories like that. And now the younger generation, what they tell me is if they see someone they like, you know, it still needs to be approved by the parents. And what locals really think of us. And this one girl particular, she's like, oh, I love the Japanese, the Chinese and the Koreans. They all like, like this and they're so polite and they're so friendly. Yeah, but they're like, yeah, Caucasians, they're like, you know, just really, really uh, arrogant and don't really like to mix with, with the locals. As for her accommodation of choice, the dirt cheap local chaikanas or tea houses. I've been at a chaikana in for the past week and a half. Traditionally, what uh, what it is is that uh, men who travel from Herat to Bamiyan, uh, it would take like three or four days to travel, and they wouldn't have accommodation. So these chaikanas are like a place where you eat and then you pay for the food and then you can just crash in the carpet for a night. So these are the people who work at the chaikana. This is the boss. He's a good man, he's a good man. He's a very good man. This is where they heat up the water. They fill up the chai here. By around eight o'clock, it's lights out. So after dinner, people just crush here. It's like a social space for, for, for the Afghan men. So we're at Candace's Chaikana, where I think she's paying the whopping sum of $8 a night. And I love it because she is complaining about it. She's like, it's much cheaper in Pakistan. So this is the room. Three beds, I sleep on that one. The police come every night. I think they thought I was a prostitute. They come in and make sure I'm the only one here. By the time Candace is done traveling, she'll have visited Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, and several other countries, leaving a trail of confusion in her wake. Nice! <laughs> Salam! On the next episode of Abroad Abroad, Want to really impress your Thanksgiving guests this year? Think less Mayflower and way more Mexico.